Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going through the third of the three story graph challenges. So the first story graph challenge was the onboarding challenge, which is all about getting recommendations based on the features of story graph itself. The second one was the genre challenge, which was based on genres, but they had a little bit more specificity than that. And the third one is the reads the world challenge where you have 10 countries and the goal is to read from an author based in that country for each of the 10 countries. The harder version of this goal is to read from an author who is currently living in that country at the time of writing. So rather than one who immigrated to somewhere else in the world, you read from an author who lived in that country at the time of writing. And that is what I tried to do in finding my books. So let me know down below if there are any that you know of that don't fit that quality because I'm really trying to read from authors who are currently living or at least were living there at the time of the writing of their books. So the first country on the challenge list is Argentina and the book I've chosen for this is Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez and this book is translated by Megan McDowell and I will read the description of this book to you. It says, Mariana Enriquez has been critically lauded for her unconventional and socio-political stories of the macabre. Macabre? How do you say that? Macabre? Macabre? I think it's macabre. Populated by unruly teenagers, crooked witches, homeless ghosts, and hungry women, they walk the uneasy line between urban realism and horror. The stories in her new collection are as terrifying as they are con socially conscious, impressed into being the unspoken, fetish, illness, the female body, the darkness of human history, with bracing urgency. A woman is sexually obsessed with the human heart. A lost, rotting baby crawls out of a backyard and into a bedroom. A pair of teenage girls can't let go of their idol. An entire neighborhood is cursed to death when it fails to respond correctly to a moral dilemma. Written against the backdrop of a contemporary Argentina and with a resounding tenderness toward those in pain, in fear, and in limbo, the dangers of smoking in bed is is Mariana Enriquez at her most sophisticated and most chilling. The second country on the list is Colombia and the book I have chosen for this is The Immortal Boy by Francisco Montaña Ibanez and the translator is David Bowles. The description for this book is two intertwining stories of Bogota. One, a family of five children left to live on their own. The other, a girl in an orphanage who will do anything to befriend the mysterious immortal boy. How they weave together will never leave you. The third country on this list is Cuba, and the book I've chosen for this is Cuentos de Palo by Hilda Pereira. And this is a book that is technically been translated to English, but I couldn't find a copy. But Cuentos de Apollo means Tales of Apollo, and the version of this that I'm going to be reading is in Spanish because that was what I could find on Amazon to get this book, and I was really interested in reading it. So the description for this book is considered a classic in of children's literature in Spain. Cuentos de Apollo portrays the hopes, pleasures, and frustrations of a sensitive black country boy anxious to learn about the world around him. The fourth country for a prompt is Italy, and the book I have chosen for this is The Hummingbird by Sandro Veronesi, and translated by Elena Paola. And the description of this is the number one international sensation from a master of European literature, winner of Italy's Premio Strega, a saga of a Florentine family from the 1960s to the present that brilliantly captures the power of history and the multifaceted experience of life itself as it explores how we contend with uncontrollable forces that both buffet and buoy us. Marco Carrera is the hummingbird, a man with an almost supernatural ability to remain still amid the chaos of an ever-changing world. Though his life is rife with emotional challenges, suffering the death of his sister and the absence of his brother, caring for his elderly parents, raising his granddaughter when her mother, Marco's own child, is no longer capable, loving an enigmatic woman, Marco carries on with a noble stoicism that belies an intensity for living. As the years pass and the arc of his life bends, Marco finds himself filled with joy for the next future as the baton passes from him to the next generation. 
A beautiful and compelling journey through time told in myriad narrative styles, The Hummingbird is a story of suffering, happiness, loss, love, and hope, of a man who embodies the quiet heroism that defines daily life for countless ordinary folk. A thrilling novel about the need to look to the future with hope and live with intensity to the very end. Sendo Veronese's masterpiece, eminently readable, rich in insight, and filled with interesting twists and revelations, is a portrait of human existence, the vicissitudes and vagaries that propel and ultimately define us. The next country on the list is Nigeria, and the book I have chosen for this is Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. And the description for this is a worldwide bestseller and the first part of Achebe's African trilogy. Things Fall Apart is the compelling story of one man's battle to protect his community against the forces of change. Ikonokwo is the greatest wrestler and warrior alive, and his fame spreads through West Africa like a bushfire in the Harmattan. But when he accidentally kills a clansman, things begin to fall apart. Then Okonokwa returns from exile to find missionaries and colonial governors have arrived in the village. When his, with his world thrown radically off balance, he can only hurtle towards tragedy. First published in 1958, Chinua Achebe's stark, coolly ironic novel reshaped both of African and the world literature and has sold over 10 million copies in 45 languages. This arresting parable of a proud but powerless man witnessing the ruin of his people begins Achebe's landmark trilogy of works chronicling the fate of one African community, continued in arrow of God and no longer at ease. The sixth country is Norway, and the book I have chosen for this is The Heartless Troll by Oyvind Torsfeather and translated by Carrie Dixon. The description for this is a fun twist on an old fairy tale called The Troll with No Heart. The Heartless Troll is about a troll who's hidden his heart and the seventh son of a king who goes in search of his six brothers. The young man's journey brings him to a mountain, a captive princess, and a terrifying troll. The illustrations are by turns fanciful and lovely, as well as dark and terrifying, but a continuous thread of good humor and playfulness runs through the whole story. The seventh country on the list is Pakistan, and the book I have chosen for this is Before She Sleeps by Bina Shah. And the description for this book is, In modern, beautiful green city, the capital of Southwest Asia, gender selection, war, and disease have brought the ratio of men to women to alarmingly low levels. The government uses terror and technology to control its people, and women must take multiple husbands to have children as quickly as possible. Yet there are women who resist, women who live in an underground collective and refuse to be part of the system. Secretly protected by the highest echelons of power, they emerge only at night to provide to the rich and elite of Green City, a type of commodity that nobody can buy. Intimacy without sex. As it turns out, not even the most influential men can shield them from discovery and the dangers of ruthless punishment. This dystopian novel from one of Pakistan's most talented writers is a modern-day parable, The Handmaid's Tale, about women's lives in repressive Muslim countries everywhere. It takes the patriarchal practices of female seclusion and veiling, gender selection, and control over women's bodies, amplifies and distorts them in a truly terrifying way to imagine a world of post-religious authoritarianism. The eighth country on this list is South Africa, and the book I have chosen for this is Zebra Crossing by Meg van der Merwe. And the description for this book is Ghost Ape, Living Dead. Young and albino, Chippo has been called many things, but to her mother, Zimbabwe's most loyal Manchester United supporter, she has always been a gift. On the eve of the World Cup, Chippo and her brother flee to Cape Town, hoping for a great life and to share in the excitement of the greatest sporting event ever to take place in Africa. But the mother's city's infamous Long Street is a dangerous place for an illegal immigrant and an albino. Soon Chippo is caught up in a get-rich-quick scheme organized by her brother and the terrifying Dr. Ongani. Exploiting gamblers' superstitions about albinism, they plan to make money and get out of the city before rumors of looming xenophobic attacks become a reality. But their scheming has devastating consequences. Set in the underbelly of a pulsating Cape Town, Meg van der Meerwees, Zebra Crossing is an arresting debut and a bold, lyrical imagining of what it's like to live in another person's skin. The ninth country on this list is Syria, and the book I have chosen for this is Sibria Damascus Bittersweet by Ulfa Edelbi and translated by Peter Clark. And the description for this book is Sabria portrays life in Damascus in the 1920s. Central to the story is Sabria's journey to self-knowledge, intertwined with the rise and eclipse of national and feminist awareness during her painful life. And finally, the 10th country on this list is Trinidad and Tobago. And the book I have chosen for this is A Plethora of Dead Ends, a collection of short stories from Trinidad and Tobago by Lair 
by Lance Dowrich. And the description for this is, A Plethora of Dead Ends is a collection of short stories based in Trinidad and Tobago. The book draws its name from Samson Street, which is a street with two dead ends. The main character on the street is Ethelbert G. Sandiford, who navigates through his dead end life with a mixture of luck and ingenuity. His family also displays similar traits, making for several comical scenarios. Overall, I am really excited to read all of these books. A lot of them are very different than what I would usually read, but I think that will make uh, exploring all of these different countries and all of these different perspectives even more interesting. If you have any suggestions for any of these countries, definitely listen down below, or any suggestions for books in translation or books written from around the world in general, I would love to hear them and I would love to add them to my TBR. Thank you so very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye!